like who's using WordPress on a daily basis? Sure. Just you? <laughs> That's not true. There are plenty. Okay, <laughs> no, um, I don't use it. And there's people at the back in our own company that use it. Come on. <laughs> Why do you want to okay. use WordPress? <laughs> You're all, yeah, exactly. There's using WordPress. Who <laughs> can say that? Uh, can you use WordPress without the necessity of any plugins or any extensions and just like code everything from scratch? No? Because that's insane, right? <laughs> that's really stupid. Uh, WordPress is kind of a mess. We can all agree on that. Like, WordPress is mostly procedural, so you go into the appendix cell. That means every time you create a new theme, you need to put your name, the name of the theme, in front of every method, every function, because otherwise, maybe a plugin or another extension can use the same function method, and it's going to be awful. Uh, every time there's a new release, new methods are most likely wrappers around older methods, so there's no, not really innovation, it's just a change of name. Uh, it's backward compatible down to version 3. Point something, if I'm sure it's down to 3.2. 3.2 was released in 2011, so six years ago. Like how many things changed in the last six years in terms of coding? WordPress still can run six years old code. It's pretty, pretty terrible. And writing a good looking theme with bad code is really easy and strangely doable. So pretty much 99% of the websites that run WordPress, they are in this situation. And uh, that's, that's, that's the, the reality, unfortunately. But WordPress, for the same exact reason, it's also amazing because it's mostly procedural. So pretty much every developer can use it, right? <laughs> it's really easy. You like the entry level is really low. Everyone, even a beginner developer, can use it. Um, new methods are wrapper of older methods. So if you have an old method wrote six years ago in version 3.2 and you update to WordPress 4.8, it will still work. It's just like so good. Uh, writing a good looking theme with that code is so easy. So you can literally write a theme by copy pasting everything from Stack Overflow. And that's great. Uh, the worst part of everything are pr pretty much the settings API. Like, there's nothing worse than that. Uh, setting SP uh, settings API were written in version 2.7, and they haven't been updated much since. So it's like 10 years old code still runs, and pretty much every plugin, plugins use this code. Um, who knows what the settings API do? Um, do you use settings API? Silence. Use media. Yeah, that guy. Okay. Two. Perfect. Okay, settings API are used to create custom administration errors. Pretty much like Advanced Custom Field Pro can do that. All the uh, commercial themes like DB or like site origins, all these like site builders create a new admin area in the menu where you have a lot of sections, subsection, custom fields, and all this kind of like crazy stuff to customize the front end. In order to write something like that, you need to use this crappy code. And that's like, you have these methods, they are just functions. You have to write all the arguments, they are just like strings, and then you have to wrap everything around a function and then hook the function with an action to just initialize everything. And this is just to create one admin page and four subpages. And this horrible, horrible code is just to create five custom fields inside one page. And you could say there's, there's nothing wrong about it. If everything is wrong about it. Because if you write something like that and it works, it's pretty, it's pretty okay. Then three months pass and you need to update one thing. You go back and it's like, try to figure out what is this thing. Like, where are the callback functions? What's the page title or the page ID or the menu slug? What is this stupid mess? Considering this is just five fields in one page, if you have an administration area with like five sections and 20 different fields, it's gonna be just a fucking mess and you're gonna hate yourself forever. So uh, the idea is because like I don't want to sleep and I don't care about going out with my girlfriend, I decided to develop this AWPS. Uh, it's a started theme fully built in object-oriented programming. It's a started theme, so it's completely bare bone. It doesn't come with anything. You install it, you get it just awful. But the source code is pretty sweet, I think. Um, it's built in um, gold. Workflow, auto compile directly, ES6, public five, browser sync, um, browser five, shim, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, has a built in custom flexbox read inside, blah, blah, blah. But uh, the better part, I think, I hope, 
uh, is uh, about a settings API. I created this settings class, and the entire thing is using Composer, auto load, and all namespaces, and all this kind of stuff. I'm sorry, nothing is in PSR2 coding conventions, so Ooh. I apologize because I'm not a sloppy developer. Uh, um, so I created this settings class that wrap all the methods of the settings API and offer a sort of interface to build and call tap the settings API WordPress in a smarter way, hopefully. So the example here, I created this custom admin class, you can call it whatever, that extends the settings API. And the settings API, they come with all these static methods that you can call without instance creating a new instance of the class. By the way, I'm Italian, so if I lose my hands a lot, that's the reason. Um, so you can create an admin pages multidimensional associative array and then you inject it to the settings at admin pages. Multidimensional array is because you can, with one single call, create multiple pages. So you just keep extending the array. These uh, creates like sub pages. And associative array, it's easier to read. Like you know exactly where is the pages block, the menu is block, what callback function is, and all this kind of stuff. Instead of like creating two pages, it's better than this. Right? Like after three months, you access back your code, then yeah, I know where things are and how to update. It's way easier. And then creating in the settings API all these methods to enqueue custom scripts, CSS, JavaScript inside your admin, specific pages, and all these settings or these methods that are created, they accept multi dimensional arrays and they respect the order of the codex of WordPress. So if you see in the settings API of WordPress, the codex, and you need to put the parent slug, the page title, the parent ID, and all this kind of stuff, the multidimensional arrays, they follow that order. So it's nothing new or outside of the schema. You could say, like, okay, this is not real object-oriented programming. This is true because I'm not actually creating an object. Settings is not an object. Uh, all the methods of static are not returning the object, I'm not creating a new instance of the class, it's just an extension, but this is a work in progress. The next step actually in the GitHub repository, the dev branch, already these methods are working and it's pretty sweet. Uh, you can call the add admin pages, inject directly and use method chaining to do everything in just one single string and inject the multidimensional array and register your settings API all together with just one simple call without even writing another class. You can, if these, I did it inside a class, so I'm not even instantiating the variable, but you can create a new settings instance and use the settings variable that has the instance of the class, just create everything. Uh, this subpages method is amazing because if you pass just the string, automatically the code knows that you want to create a subpage that is identical to the admin first page, so you don't even need to repeat the same thing because that's how the settings API works. Like, if you have an admin page and then a sub first sub page of that admin page, you need to repeat the same exact things of the admin page. You need to repeat the callback function, the slug, it's just stupid, so you can just avoid writing <coughs> settings. And um, asking about performance, thanks for requesting this. Really nice of you. So I did this experiment, I created this page, and to create this page, the code is exactly is actually this one. This one to create one simple admin page. Uh, I'm uh, including custom CSS, custom JavaScript. I'm calling the native media uploader of WordPress. I created like six custom fields with some sanitization for the Twitter handler. And I'm returning these, um, whatever, everything that I'm saving here, I'm rendering directly inside the admin area. This is including also Google Font, I think this is a railway. And I created this page with the default settings API WordPress with the 2017 uh, latest, greatest theme. And uh, of course, it's, it's pretty okay. Like, nothing, I'm, I'm running this on local Laravel Ballet, sorry, <laughs> local Ballet installation, so it's pretty, it's pretty light. But it's, we have 1,300 different functions that run in 656 milliseconds with a total included cost eight. Uh, the same exact page with the um, my object oriented programming settings API. We have way more methods, but hey, 600 milliseconds. So we save 54 milliseconds in execution. And the total cost is the, of the actual thing. So uh, I didn't do any more testing because I didn't have time. I'm, I'm lazy, I don't test. So don't ask me anything about tests because I don't know anything. 
but it's pretty great. But overall, the whole, the entire goal of creating these settings API for like the container for the settings API is that we can build custom things for WordPress without relying every day on plugins that probably the yet vulnerabilities will get discontinued that we don't know what to do anymore. And we don't need to use the default interface of WordPress that is pretty awful, but unfortunately WordPress, it's here and it's gonna be here forever probably and everyone uses it. It's the easiest way to create a, a, a blog or a page or even like a, a business website with that super easy and stupid to use CMS. So that's it. GitHub, so please like fork it, destroy it, tell me that it's stupid and just contribute to the project. <laughs>